right now at 6. A D.C. councilman now facing federal bribery charges. The FBI describing a six-figure scheme involving meeting in cars, cash in envelopes, and lavish trips in exchange for government contracts for programs designed to help troubled youth. Also, weeks after an infant's death during a dispatch outage, a criminal probe, and a slew of other problems, DC 911 officials attempt to explain what's gone wrong, but with no cameras allowed. What they told 7 News when we pressed for more information behind closed doors. Right now at 6, we have team coverage of multiple breaking stories. Good evening to you. I'm Scott Thuman. We are devoting our newscast tonight to comprehensive coverage right here. First, Ward 8 Council Member Trayon White in court on federal bribery charges and DC's Office of Unified Communications taking questions for the first time since an infant died during a computer outage. 7 News confronts the agency on transparency and its years of troubles. We're going to begin, though, with Council Member White. Less than 24 hours after being arrested by feds, we have learned he's accused of accepting bribes to influence contracts with the district. White is chairperson of the committee that oversees several agencies, including the Department of Youth Rehabilitation Services. The FBI claims that the bribery charges are related to the money that goes to support neighborhood-based organizations to help young people and to stop violence. He's accused of accepting $156,000 in bribes. I-Team investigator Scott Taylor has been digging into the Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement for months. And I-Team investigator Mitch Blocker takes a close look at the violence interrupter programs. And Tom Rousey looks at your tax dollars in play. We begin, though, tonight with Scott Taylor. Scott. Yeah, Scott, uh, one of the departments, the D.C. departments in question, is uh, actually called onesie for short and it helps run one of the district's violence interrupter programs. Seven News has also discovered it does not like to answer questions and doesn't hand over documents in a timely fashion. Ward 8 DC Councilman Trayon White in federal court facing charges of bribery. White, who's 40, chairs a council committee that oversees the D.C. Department of Youth Rehabilitation Services. The FBI claims White was paid $156,000 in cash to help influence the renewal of contracts for two companies doing business with the district, DYRS and the Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement, or ONESI, who run one of the violence interrupter programs in the city. Here's a reaction from Mayor Muriel Bowser. Well, I think any time you have an elected official that does something wrong or is accused of doing something wrong, uh, it, it people are going to have a lot of heartburn and serious questions and disappointment and anger and all of those things. 7 News has been asking for months for a complete record of vendors who supply violence interrupters to the district under onesie. So far, much of what 7 News has received doesn't tell the entire story. 7 News recently went to events where officials with onesies were attending. Our questions about its violent interrupter program were not answered. We reached out to the office today, but it hasn't commented. The FBI says White was caught on camera multiple times accepting bribes inside vehicles. There are texts being used as evidence. And this picture of a ledger, agents say it shows both companies' grants, the amount of the grants, and how much of a cut White would receive. Members of D.C. City Council call it tragic. It's a tragic day for the district when somebody in a position like that is accused of something like this. It's a tragic day for Councilmember White. I want to look at the facts, figure out what's going on, and not be speculating based on the few snippets I've heard here today. White didn't comment in court and as he jumped into a car to leave, a group of supporters shielded him and shouted, more day, more day. Right now, we expect that uh, next month, White will be voted off of all committees with the council. And if he's convicted, he can expect to spend the next 15 years in prison. For the I-Team, Scott Taylor, 7 News. 
All right, thank you for that report. Another major question tonight is will Trayon White remain in office in the meantime? All indications are that he is on track to win re-election after winning his primary. At first glance, there is a mechanism for the council to expel a colleague. It almost happened with Jack Evans back in 2019. It would have been a first in council history, but he ended up resigning amid an ethics scandal. Now, D.C. voters can also launch a recall measure. Signatures are needed, of course, and then a vote can be held. We're going to look closer at both procedures in the coming days and weeks to better provide an answer. Now, we heard a lot about violence interrupters in Scott's report. So what are they? What do they do? Investigative reporter Mitch Blocher is here now with that context. Mitch. So there are two programs. The D.C. Attorney General's office who runs one called Cure the Streets and Mayor Bowser's office runs the other one out of the city's Neighborhood Safety and Engagement office. Now both programs pay neighborhood organizers to interrupt violence. They generally hire people who live in high crime neighborhoods and who are a part of those neighborhoods. Now these are people who know what feuds might actually lead to violence and they serve as mentors and mediators to try to de-escalate disagreements before they go too far. Last year, violence interrupters mediated 344 neighborhood ceasefires. That is according to the Bowser administration. These are areas of the district that they cover. In some cases, you'll notice both violence interrupter programs overlap. Now in April, Councilman Kenyon McDuffie sponsored a bill to actually merge these programs. He wanted all of the violence interrupters to run out of the D.C. Attorney General's office. Right now that bill is still sitting in committee. Scott, send back to you. All right, we know you'll continue to follow that. Thank you, Mitch. Meanwhile, while Scott and Mitch continue to dig into how money is spent on violence interruption programs by the Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement, we do have a broader look at their budget and cuts in the funding bill for next year. Our Tom Rousey is at the alert desk with what he uncovered. Tom? Yeah, Scott, this is that budget you mentioned behind me here. And if you look deep down in it, you will see money for Violence Prevention Office. It's the budget for the Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement, which opened its doors in 2017 and saw an influx of cash due to COVID relief funds. Also, it hailed a shift in crime fighting philosophy away from police. Now, as I mentioned, this is the budget behind me and in its documents, it states that the mission of the agency is to quote, build a community oriented model for violence prevention and public safety. Well, in the new budget year, it is poised to see a $5 million cut and specifically the violence intervention office funds will be slashed in half to just over $7 million. That's as a result of that COVID money, which was one time drying up. However, the violence interruption office, well, it's still tied for having the most employees in the Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement. You can see the public documents that I just mentioned on my X account. I posted them there. You can just go to Tom Rousey 7 News and find them, Scott. All right, thank you. Now so much going on. 7 News has reached out to the directors at the Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement, as well as Youth Rehabilitation Services for comments as their agencies were the ones mentioned in federal criminal complaints. The only response we got was from the YRS spokesperson who directed 7 News to the mayor's office. Her staff told us to refer to her public comments, which you heard in Scott Taylor's report. We invite you to go to our website, WJLA.com, where the Trayon White arrest is our top story. There you can scroll through the entire criminal complaint, which includes screen captures of the text messages and the informant's secret video recordings. We have an infant in cardiac arrest. Okay, this is part of our other big story. DC 911 leaders speak for the first time since a five month old child died during a dispatch computer outage. Seven News is on your side, pushing for transparency as we continue our special coverage of this big day of news.